What's up? All right, today we got a guest, Brian Box Brown, comic artist uh, and activist. And uh, let's get into it, guys. What up, Brian? Hey, thanks for having me. No, thanks for joining us, man. I really enjoy watching your, your strips on the Twitter feed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell everybody a little about yourself? Yeah, so uh, I'm a, a comic artist, uh, cannabis enthusiast. Um, I uh, made a number of graphic novels, mostly uh, nonfiction. Um, my book, Andre the Giant, Life and Legend, was a New York Times bestseller. Um, my other books, um, you know, have my, my book about uh, Andy Kaufman uh, nice. won the Eisner Award. Um, so I've been do- doing a number of these uh, nonfiction books, and I did a nonfiction book about cannabis called Cannabis, the Illegalization of Weed in America, which tells more of the story of how weed became illegal. Here we are in this new... Uh, time period where stuff's becoming legalized this is how it became illegal in the first place like what are we why are we you know i don't think you could really do the legalization thing without knowing what what had happened and how silly it was yeah. because it really dictates a lot of how stuff goes down where did you get a lot of your information at so have you read um there's a really cool book called uh, uh cannabis or marijuana the rise and fall and rise again by uh, this chick Emily Duffin, and she really got into yeah. like the. Uh huh. I know yeah. her. Oh really? Right um, yeah, yeah. I did an event with her one time in DC. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it, that that more recent book. I feel like I used one of her older books. It was like know. three, four years ago. But that's I mean, what uh, I did with my book, like yeah, 10, yeah. 11 years ago. And then I got a job at a law firm. They said you will stop promoting that book. And then um, so it was just different time but then like it yeah. was exactly that same thing the as you learn the history of the prohibition of cannabis especially from a lawyer's perspective like if you've gone to law school and stuff and you're not just like puking into a corner somewhere going like you have to be shitting me we couldn't have done this and <laughs> yeah, you're like no we no we would do it we we did it like out in the open right in front of your face for decades you know yeah yeah and it was like uh um, you know, I don't know if I, I, I thought I kind of had the history down before I got into writing that book, but you know, once you really start reading some of these like first person accounts and stuff and, and what was actually going on, this guy Ainslinger was like, yep. you know, we owe this, this, this last century of prohibition to this like a careerist guy that would have just done anything. Yeah. Um, it, it's like this one dude's philosophy dictated in the entire world philosophy on a plant wow it's crazy power he brainwashed all of them and yeah everybody they, everyone over and over again down the line generation but then, like, generation. you see what he's doing to find facts and he's like using journalism like newspaper reports oh, yeah. uncooperated no scientific studies whatsoever oh, and yeah. then he exploits congress and like even trying to find the congressional record when i was drafting that that took forever because, you know, you find out how they passed it in the 30s, like in the summer when most of the people were not in Washington. Uh-huh. And then they they used Dr. Woodward to literally lie to the Republicans. And they, were, they completely misrepresented him. And then that guy who lied to, like, get the law passed becomes the Supreme Court Chief Justice. And you're like, yeah. no fucking way. And you're like, yeah, it's Fred Vinson, you know. And then you're yeah. like, oh, my God. The more that I looked into it, I was just like, and no one knows and then like you know it sold all right you know but then i had to quit promoting it like in 2011 when i got a job at a larger law firm practicing bank law it was just oh illinois yeah. 2011 you're like you don't need to do that um yeah. <laughs> but uh shit, man it was something else that you just see all this and then no one cared like yeah. making something a crime like that yeah. varies factually mm-hmm. if people don't even want to look because they don't want to risk themselves so you know now uh Flash forward, you know, I'm a patient, medical patient here in PA, and, um, you know, knowing this whole history and knowing what's going on, and I'm looking at this market and being a a patient in this market, I think this is a common experience for people, and you guys know this in Illinois because it's similar there, where, you know, when you're in a limited licensed market and it's like, 
all you know a handful of big operators running the show you know when you go to that dispensary the first time you're like this is cool man look at this look at all this weed it's legal. This is, yeah like they're like this is great and um and it doesn't take very long like a month into the whole thing you're like all right i bought everything here i'm way spent way more money than i did last month uh oh, yeah. And I don't, you know, you're not, you got to, you stop appreciating it right away. So you end up just going right back to Frank. your, your bro or whatever. What is their medical out? scene? Or you grow your own. But, yeah, yeah. Or you grow your own, which we can't do here. But like, so did you guys legalize medical marijuana like Illinois did then? Cause like, see yeah. I'm here in Washington state where it was uh, like, like in California where everybody was a patient and then the patients became the collectives and then the, the collectives became the stores and then the medical was more of a self-monitoring there was no real registry or any of that stuff right is that what you guys do then no i mean our pa is, is just like this ugly so but that so that what you guys had in the west coast was great it was like this natural kind of pre i mean it's it has its problems obviously but it was this natural progression you're right it went from collective um, you know, into the store, into eventually being stores and, you know, all that stuff. And, and from home grow to collectives, all this stuff. And, and in the East Coast, they were like, all right, skip all that stuff that gives the power to the people. No collectives, no home grow, none of that stuff. Only let these six people grow. We're going to give out these six licenses. They're going to be really expensive. You know, so that's what it's like in PA. And that's why the prices, you know, now when I got into it, I was like, why is this happening? Like, why aren't there more people entering the market and they're bringing the prices down? And then, you know, you start looking into it and, and there's like price fixing. You're like, oh my on. God, it's Venezuela. Yeah. Like, I mean, why, is it, why is it Russia? Why is it Venezuela? Why have we yeah. created uh, an OPEC cartel, cartel style of things that yeah, are the only ones who get that right? Why, yeah. are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. I, it's just like... Generational so, wealth. So I yeah. wanted to... Uh, Way to make a book about this, right? This was going to be like my next book, all this stuff. But the way the book industry works, like it's, it's so slow, man. Like I, I actually have a book coming out in November that I illustrated about uh, Vladimir Putin. And I finished illustrating that book like three years ago and it's still oh not coming God. out. So, so it's like wow. a slow, especially with COVID, there was like a delay too. And, and yeah, uh, I haven't bought you a know, book. right. So it's a, it's, it's been a slow, as a slow, you know, it would be outdated, all the information in that book. So that's why I started making my weekly strip legalization nation to kind of like witness all this stuff that was happening. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, since I started making the comic, though, I, I've been getting like just more into, uh, uh, you know, actual, actual activism, um, working with, you know, my local politicians and stuff like that as best I can um, and kind of keeping the conversation I think where it's supposed to be I would say my stuff is just from a consumer perspective so like uh, you know a lot of the consumer perspective coincides with small business perspective but but not all the way like the consumers have their own unique uh, wants and needs that eventually, no matter how good any business is, the, the consumer and the business actually have different needs. The consumer is always going to keep searching for higher quality, um, lower prices, all things like that. And the, just something new. Like, I yeah. love pizza. But if I had sure. to go to the same pizzeria every night, seven nights a week, yeah. I would be so bored. And so I know. like that novelty aspect. I agree. So that, so that is something that's also missing from uh, in, in Illinois, especially there's mm -hmm. so few um, operators and in PA too. And that's something that's missing. And I think that people don't realize a lot. A, a lot of times when they're writing these laws, they're like, oh, well, listen, we just need, you know, New Jersey, we calculated, we figured out all of these things that New Jersey, New Jersey will consume like 200 tons of weed this year so we just need 200 tons of weed that's well, it for the whole thing those numbers are wrong i mean if I, right. I calculated my numbers i know what it is and right. so like that's that's, that's not what here, i yeah. like 
you don't just need there to be 200 tons of wheat. Right. You need there to be a, 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 a completely varied and and full uh, selection for for consumers. Isn't it like, lovely? Yeah. Like, we're in Illinois. We got some craft growth. And so trying to get those suckers off the air uh, when they're social equity and like, you know, they don't have a lot of money uh, when they're social equity and they're disclosing a capital raise or something like that. If we win a license, we're going to be a marketable commodity because it's a limited market uh, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to do a capital raise. Right. And so that and then the state puts like a limit. And so like, why is there a limit? Wow. And so as soon as you win, you're supposed to be open in six months if you're a grower. And the smallest grow is about $7 million to build, seven to nine. Yeah. And so you wire this person who's like you've disclosed as a capital raise, uh, not in operation after six months when you also have no protections. Like in New Jersey, there's protections for financial source agreements, you know, loans and other types right. of chicanery that you would use to capitalize a business. I'm in the yeah. middle of it. Fun. I really enjoy it because I'm a finance guy. But um how, how Those many protections being built in allow and then new jersey started small like the to get going for a grow in new jersey not seven million bucks two one yeah you know it's and, really and so, the micro grow yeah. license is really small i mean it's like you can it, it makes I mean, about a thousand pounds of cannabis a year from our yeah. from our number yeah so like but the thing that they could have gone further in jersey and i think they should do this in other places is you can start a micro, you can start a cannabis business from your home and you should right. be able to. And they don't allow that almost anywhere where, because you, you have to have, you know, it has to be in a commercial, you know, right. zoned area. And With really HD like cameras. Yeah, and, and, you got to have cameras guards. over there. Yeah. All that stuff. And like, it, it's so, that is so limiting for everybody because it makes it's like the way they put abortion clinics out of business by make, having all these crazy regulations that they can't that they screw up right. it's like it's so you know and a lot of times and i'm not like a i'm not like a total like a libertarian on everything like i think that there should be some regulations but like sure i totally see these the way that that um big companies lobby for tons of regulations because it's easy for them what's the What's another yeah. million bucks? For your That's what it is. Like you don't have their country club friends. You don't have their family office access. You're not going to be able to strike a check for 10 million bucks. So we'll just make right. the game's rules require that. And then you're out. But, yep. you know, that sucks because how many farmers markets or like we have food carts here in Peoria, Illinois, how many food carts turned into restaurants yep. because you gave them a place to start mm. where they could be like the cottage industry type stuff mm. where you may be able to make cookies or cupcakes or something and then sell them at a farmer's market but then if you want to go up to the next level there's a little bit more regulations and that's what right. food stuffs and that's really yeah. what we is it's a food you yeah. consume it like you, as, you no, know you can eat no it we, and inhale it you know there's no reason we need weed to be more safety tested and more regulated than the food that we consume you know, like we don't get a absolute, <laughs> we don't get an absolute uh, mo molecular look at every piece of lettuce that we eat. You know, we don't we aren't really geeked yeah. out on the turp profile of lettuce. <laughs> <you know? laughs> that's true. <laughs> but I just, I mean, and honestly, like that stuff, um, the, the, that type of thing isn't super uh, expensive, like the, the, the testing stuff it's more of the other stuff that we're talking about like cameras everywhere 24-hour security access um, key cards all that like stuff. they have uh, oh. schedule one substance safes and because the safe banking act hasn't passed speaking of safes but by that i mean vaults you know the things yeah. that you're going to store the product to the cash but because then also not safe banking act then it's even more dangerous uh, miggy will report regularly out of uh, Washington pot shops, which they call dispensaries out there, robberies that are dangerous and at gunpoint. But that's where the money is. That's where the cash is or the weed is. We just had lots of life. There was some bud tender that got shot and died two weeks ago from uh, a string of robberies that were happening within the week uh, up and down our coast. But, you know, Brian, also to your point, too, I also want to thank uh, Rick Lambert for his 20 bucks for a super sticker. But, uh, um, uh, dude, you know, what other market is 
made by the 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 the, the industry itself. It's, it should be the consumer that shapes the market, right? When you're talking about yeah. the the the, the, the industries, beef, you know, it, it most makes, of all of agriculture. <laughs> yeah. Every market should be like the consumer's needs should be the focus of the entire market because every business needs to focus on the consumer's needs. There's more consumers than anybody, any other stakeholder here. The consumers are the biggest one. Dude, we had over, so in medical times out here, we had a thousand dispensaries, right? And that wasn't just a thousand. It wasn't like those thousands were owned by multiple people. It was pretty much a thousand owners, but also a thousand grows, you know, because all these people were kind of like innovating. And so it was amazing to me when in the early days of medical, I saw a variety of just ingenuity. I mean, this is pure capitalism, what it's supposed to be about, where people have fair market competition. You know, we're overtaxing these guys. Huh? It's Oklahoma, dude. There's weird yeah, slurs. Yeah, Oklahoma it's a, is what, it, what Washington used to be. So, but uh, the big thing with Oklahoma, right? So, um, Oklahoma, I, you know, I have, uh, I would, I, if I was a consumer in Oklahoma, I would absolutely love it because there's like 80 billion ways to get weed and it's cheap and all that stuff. The thing that really is actually like what makes Oklahoma, Oklahoma is that they, didn't let any, they took away the power of the, the township to discriminate against cannabis businesses. So like, that's a big thing in Jersey, right? So, and all Here. over, everywhere, Here. Maine. Like California, California, Michigan, ODs right. right. of the illegal industry are still mostly illegal. And so like, I think California just finally crossed over that 50% threshold. And so now most of California is legal, but every election cycle you see new uh, com you know, communities coming online because they have the dual licensing structure. New Jersey's just adopted that, but um, like it seems like New York, Virginia, Illinois, they have the single state licensing structure, but they still gave a lot of um, uh, authority to the communities in Illinois to be able to opt out and then also to say, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't ban weed from being illegal in your community. You could say, we don't allow dispensaries here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what happened. You know, New Jersey. You know, I think the average of average percentage of the state that ends up actually allowing weed businesses is like thirty percent of the state. Yeah. The other thing like, about with that, with thirty-five dispensaries for ninety-eight thousand people, that would fuck up my financial models. That would fuck up my models hard. My models would need to be rejiggered on that noise. I mean, look, um, what I, I think one of the things we have to consider going forward is that um, it's going to be a crazy wild west market and it's kind of that's what we want we want it to be is it 420 now it's 420, <laughs> yeah, it's 420 in philly okay. so we're going to take a small commercial break That 420 uh, summer was brought to you by my company, Collateral Base. If you need a cannabis license, you should head on over to CannabisIndustryLawyer.com and get in touch with us at the Collateral Base, and we will uh, follow up and let you know. Uh, hopefully, some of your dreams will come true. You know, another great thing about Oklahoma is, though, it doesn't have a limited market, right? Except for yeah. the fact that you have to be a resident. You know, that's yeah. what gives that variety, that fair competition. But they, Oklahoma is actually an interesting respect, though, because like just to take a second out of the thing that's going on, Illinois is like just limping to the barn. And these are the types of things that could also go wrong in uh, uh, New Jersey or New York uh, because they're only licensing state residents. Now, here's how, uh, you know, I've seen it in New Jersey and also in Oklahoma, but not necessarily in Illinois. Illinois stacked it wrong. So you had to be an Illinois resident. And so with New with New Jersey, you've stacked it so like all the micros, so that you the micros could have what they call a dormant commerce clause challenge to them filed in federal court. And there was just one of those filed in Illinois on uh, March 25th. So like two days ago, like, you know, it's like a fuck you Friday filing. And um, it, those are a thing. I remember practicing like, you know, litigation law as opposed to like weed law. But uh, anyway, and so they, they're trying to invalidate the entire 185 lottery. Uh, for all those licenses, because they all had to go to Illinois residents. And that violates the California man's right as a, a citizen of the United States, per, uh, pursuant to the Dormant Commerce Clause. 
And so these have been successful, these types of lawsuits. Now in Oklahoma or in New Jersey or New York, uh, the way that they get around that is they make the uh, ownership percentages thusly. So in Oklahoma, it is 75-25. So for the first two years, 75% of your license must be for someone who has lived in the state of Oklahoma for two years. And then you can, so you see a lot of these transactional deals where my rights to buy your steak uh, vests in two years and then you're out. Good time. Mm-hmm. Good times in the cannabis space because yeah. you have to do very strange structured financing and, and mm. um, complex corporate so formation issues. There's like stuff like this happening in PA, right? So what happens is uh, you got five, you know, there's like five or six or seven really big companies like MSOs. And then there's a couple of PA companies in there, right? And so these PA companies, I'm always like, yes, I'm like, yes. Fucking a new PA companies here. I could like a local, a local, you know, group. But they just kind of became a family business that's now printing money. They don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, but also they don't care about the weed either. Yeah. Like they, they, so they, I've heard this story a couple times about a couple different businesses where they basically set up a nominal grow kind of produce a bunch of packaging and and get it at the stores once or twice, and then kind of like sit there and wait to be bought, and that's the whole business plan like there's not it's not what, 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 what uh you know, brian box brown has just brought up is literally a thing in structure in, in the finance aspect of cannabis and there's nothing wrong against it but it's called getting it stable i want to get it stable and i want an exit and 90 mm-hmm. percent of the sophisticated money types so the types of people that you need to do business with if you're social equity uh because they have the capital and they see it as a flip they really don't give two shits about weed but they want money and so uh that's what they're looking for they're looking for starting it up stabilizing it exiting for multiple that doesn't that only exists in a limited license place so if their licenses aren't limited you can't Mm -hmm. the value of that license does not go up when you get anybody but then there's no generational wealth in an unlimited license state because i can go buy a bar I don't think my grandkids Seriously. have it made because I own a bar. Right. You know? Well, that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Well, I understand, but some people have been sold <laughs> generational wealth. And that's well, why they're getting into it. A lot of people got sold things that they ended up uh, it ended up not being the case of what it was. Well, I mean, there's... It, it's just listen, because... you can build a, if you build a huge business, you create generational wealth, man. Yeah. Look... I mean, it's, it comes down to how well you perform, actually, instead of how much money you have to invest only. Right. But you, if, but you run perform. out the clock because like my, my, my dad's buddy that went to Princeton as well. Uh, and then he didn't become a backwater lawyer like my pop. He became, um, you know, a structured financing guy in Wall Street. They have like a hall, a wing named after him now at Princeton. Uh, and he has one kid, even though like him and his wife were making eight figures each during their prime years until they have a, a nice little family unit, which is like wink, wink, nudge, nudge for over a hundred million bucks. And then um, what does their daughter do? She graduates with art history and God knows if she'll even have a kid. And so that generational wealth thing, stack it all to the ceiling. It might be gone. You might just get yeah. Edsel, like, you know, Edsel Ford. Remember him? He did a great mm-hmm. thing for the Ford company when he left, you know, mm. but do you guys think, you know, as, you know, we, we're actually supposed to be going to be hearing about the Morac hitting the floor next week, right? Do you think these big MSOs are actively lobbying against it, right? Like trying to prevent, you know, they just want to keep 50 individual markets in America, not one unified. Uh, I could see them trying to shape it. I could see it sandbagging. Sandbagging um, until, like, because yeah. you guys haven't been locked up yet. Pennsylvania yeah. hasn't been locked up. They're in the process of locking up New Jersey. They're in the process of locking up New York. They locked up Illinois and they turned it into a clusterfuck of lawsuits. Matt, it looks like New Jersey's going to a clusterfuck of lawsuits come spring. New York, Georgia. the ship they're putting into New York, that looks like a clusterfuck of lawsuits with a whole bunch of farmers sitting on wait, not knowing where they can sell it. I mean, it, it, and so they're doing all sorts of great stuff. And meanwhile, they're the only game in town. All those lawsuits. All that stuff ends up only harming consumers and small businesses. Exactly. Yeah, but think about it as a line item. Think about it as a line item on Cresco's, you know, consolidated balance sheet. 
and I don't mean to make fun of them. They just bought Columbia Care, so they clearly have bills. To They're pay. like, yeah. So you just spent you just spent four hundred thousand dollars on a lawyer to do a structured deal. What's another two hundred thousand dollars to sponsor a piece of litigation that stalls the market for two years? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I mean, it's all it's so plain once you when you look at it. This is the whole. But when this I'm is making, business. When That's I'm making the these comics, right? But I'm making these comics to like let people know that you can't. This is that legalization the way you think it is. Like yeah. the, the average person down the street. Listen, a lot of people fucking smoke weed. I don't know. Are we allowed to swear here? I mean, like, You're good. Oh, the internet, oh, yeah, man. On the internet. We're just not allowed to openly use the product, and they still will censor us. So, like, some of the stuff that we'll do about legislative activism uh, will be flagged for 18 plus for really okay. no understanding other than somebody didn't want it to spread. Because if something's yeah. flagged by that, uh, you'll see your trajectory on, a, on an episode, and then suddenly it gets hit and it's just thuds. And then yeah. so not only that, then they can also just do that several times, and then they will not circulate your channel near as much as they'll circulate other channels. Yeah. So this just is stuff happens on uh, it happens on Instagram too all the time. Like exactly. If, so many people got their pages deleted. People with like hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff. Right. And so you were trying to like not only change the law. But also front run these, um, you know, you shouldn't just look at weed as spreadsheets and how much money is going to go into your bank account because yeah. that that misunderstands weed uh, by a large margin. And especially considering like now, maybe you can look at that spreadsheet for five, 15,000 square foot of flowering canopy, but trying to maintain quality and variety uh, beyond that you're going to start to have some issues and you nobody really likes the mso weed they're like ah it's crap it's this it's that it's not good listen if there was uh you know a million choices and there needed to be like a bud light of weed fine i mean listen i was i, I was young once i drank natty light it was like yeah. so cheap and bad right. you know what i mean like there's a market for that but yeah. exactly well, but, but there's a market for the edible. There's a market for the consumable. But remember, trying to make Bud Light out of an agricultural crop with the genetic diversity of weed, and then also in the way that it can be grown and then you know sold. And so, like how Budweiser, to keep their beer fresh, made a network of various brewing locations. Mm -hmm. Perhaps yeah. if they did it that way, and they had a clone, and they were really, really good at con controlling every aspect of that environment so like the whole thing mm. is a branded mcdonald's cheeseburger experience yeah but that's real fucking hard and why would you want that and, and you but, know something i don't think the people that are at the top of this game are not the the the, the like time tested um you know the companies that have like like when i think about a, a strong big cannabis company I think about somebody in the California market that is really big and actually competing in a competitive market where there's a lot of players. And I don't see any of these big names that are all over PA and, and Illinois and, and all over the East Coast. They're not competitive in California. But, but Brian, you know, see, the, the thing is, too, is what is a big name, right? So, like, when it comes to cannabis, like, early days when illegal prohibition in high times, you know, you, the quality cannabis that we, you thought was quality was grown by Jorge Cervantes and all these people out in the outlaws. Right now we got mm -hmm. cookies. Like everybody knows fucking cookies and runs. Right. But nobody knows farms, you know, yeah. they're talking about genetics. They're not talking about the actual, you know, the growing process, you know, cause like to your point, you know, I used to say like, all we need is lab regulation because people will smoke shitty weed, right? They'll smoke shit with pesticides in it and everything else because it has a, a, a label on it and, and they'll do it because they smoke cigarettes. So, mm -hmm. you know, we all know that good weed is pure. It's delicious. Hell, they're growing good weed in Oregon for $300 pounds, but you guys are suffering with like $300 quarters and hey, so it's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, the, the the ability out there is to happen. The market to, to be is mm -hmm. out there, but yet because it's limited I and mean, it's controlled, that's where mm -hmm. you guys, you know, they're what are you guys paying in Chicago there? You, uh, they're like $80 ace or some shit like that. Yeah, I mean, it, even here, even here, they're $70 ace. Oh my God. I mean, $55 ace is pretty much standard. That's what you're coming out with.
It's not and that's, so, and that's kind of like the they. I think they might be selling. There's some people selling quarters, but like pretty much everybody just sells eighths. So if you want to go in and get an ounce, you got to buy eight eighths. That's how you get right. an ounce. You know, you Correct. Eight packages, That's it. Of bags Correct. Of big, million boxes in it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's do uh, uh, this is one of the deals that we like to do. We have bumpers on the show and so not just the 420 anywhere, but then there's also this one. So let's uh, let's do uh, let's get a price check in Wrigleyville. So we're going to go uh, stop over in Wrigleyville, Lakeview, and we're going to shop the adult use market. Uh, the sunny side is Cresco's dispensary, yeah. by the way, except all uh, look at that. You can get this is this is a deal. Max seven. 47 bucks so that is actually uh one of the best price points that i've seen however uh, if you try to check out with this then you're going to see the amount of taxes this is pre-tax oh. so after you laid some taxes on that you're still probably walking out the door at 60 bucks and i would rather have that eighth that i bought when i was visiting miggy in july uh, in washington state for 33 dollars um and and that was just great stuff now how what's the tax rate in washington man Oh, here I, I think it's uh, like twenty five percent or something ridiculous. Like they're getting screwed. The farmers are for sure. But um, yeah, but the customer doesn't even know that in Washington. Yeah, I, I bought bought weed in Washington. You just go over there. I mean, this is how I think. I talked to the owner of the dispensary why they do it, and he's like, "We got to keep it simple because you know people got to keep it simple." Hot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so <laughs> they just you know you go in and you see it says sixty bucks. It's six, that has all the taxes built in right there. And then you know what you're walking out. That keeps people because you got to pay cash and shit. So it keeps people from getting to the register and then being like, "Oh, take a few things back. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the ATM." It like keeps people moving through the store because otherwise that because they can't take credit cards and whatever. You got to do you know. Sunny. We have so we have sunny side in, in PA and prices are similar. And we always talk about how so what happens is for patients you got to like ride those sales you got to find the, where the sales are and then make sure you're buying your weed on like fucking cresco True, but whatever. then cresco's already cresco's already using its vertical integration prior to having anyone else to compete against not one craft grow to compete against they're already using their vertical integration to crush the crush the price of their eighth flower and then being able to make it up because they don't have to sell it wholesale sell it retail they just can they get the they get a double cut that i mean so they get to sell it wholesale they get to sell it retail uh but it, you know it, it'll still be a 60 dollar eighth when you leave and it's 15 percent off otherwise so we have uh, we're looking at we look at pre compare prices with maine all the time because maine's like a oh, really yeah. competitive market mm, and yep. so, and, but but uh cure leaf operates in maine wow and so <laughs> So uh, Cure Leaf charges, you know, similar prices to this for an app, you know, an ounce of weed's like $480 or something like that. In Maine, an ounce of Cure Leaf flour is 60 bucks. What? And, which is They're doing the under, opposite game. They're just right, slamming is, the floor. Yeah. Which is way under the under market. And, and it's cheap in Maine. I mean, fuck, you could get a really good ounce of weed for like 120 bucks in Maine. Nice. Which is cheap. And Cure Leaf is undercutting all those places by 50 percent to try to get market share and no one's buying it because there's so much competition like damn it's it's such a it's, it's wild because like you could live in north jersey right you're like four hours from southern maine and you can use your medical cards in southern maine and so in north jersey same company charging you 60 bucks an eighth is charging you 60 bucks an ounce only a four hour drive away. Yeah, it's take a crazy. nice weekend. Go do some leaf <laughs> people. Mean, yeah. Honestly, you know, like people do it. Go to Kittery, uh, Maine. Come on. It. We know who won the uh, the dispensaries there. They're getting yeah. indicted. That was a brute force lottery. You know, yeah. and that's the other aspect of it where they say, Oh, we're gonna try to make it fair. It's twenty bucks to enter the lottery. No limit on how many tickets you can buy. And so the guy who won, it was it wasn't twenty bucks, it was seven hundred and fifty. But he spent a mm, quarter million dollars in lottery tickets. He yeah, bought fifty percent of lottery tickets. Yeah, three yeah, yeah. So he this bought he won two of them. Yeah. This is why I'm like, 
can't well, don't limit it because why, why is there a lottery? I mean, if you're Seriously. qualified, you can you limit it, but limit it like it's a bar. Don't limit it like it's it's generational wealth. You know, it's if you don't want another limited. bar in your community, it's, fine. It doesn't get a lottery. That'll get if that. That's what I mean, though. That that is happening. Like that, it's already getting limited at the township level, and it, you know that's built into the law that if you know. Township doesn't want to have a dispensary or doesn't want to have I, I, my, my cousin lives in Jersey and he's telling me that, you know, in his township, they're all about like, you can grow it here, but we don't want any processing. Damn. And I'm sitting here going like, what do they think is getting, I mean, what is, what, 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 what do they mean? What, why? So you I, got, I think they think what are you doing with your trim or something. Like, you know, I think what? they think, I'm like, they're, you really, that's what you're like, there, it's not, you know, it's not refining raw petroleum into gasoline. <laughs> not it's even like making edibles. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. rosin. Well, I, mean, I guess if you said super critical uh, carbon, high, no, super critical carbon dioxide extraction to a regulator, they'd go, "I'm sorry, I don't listen to death metal," and like just yeah. walk into an elevator or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, they would no, not know what that. you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> But didn't Jersey like half of the uh, counties opt out already? Like more than you half. Know, it's like yeah, seventy yeah, percent. So it's yeah. two thirds ish, somewhere in that and, ballpark. You know that when that happens, which always happens, you know it puts this uh, the real estate for you know small businesses. Yeah. You know that puts a premium on that where, where you can operate. You know, um, you can't just like find some middle of nowhere place in jersey and then be like all right i'm gonna put my business here you got to yeah. make sure that they're okay with it and then you got to like get special permission like from the mayor the mayor of the town i think too yep you have to get uh community they call it municipal preference in new jersey and mm. then the municipal preference is done in various ways so it can be quite frustrating because the state of new jersey says here's how you do your conditional application this is what we want this is what we're looking for and then uh, the city in New Jersey will go, fuck that. We don't want that. We also want this and this and that and the yeah, other yeah, thing. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure out that. And so, like, you almost have to do the full application for cer certain communities in New Jersey. And then you only have to do a smaller application to the state so that you can get processed through the state quicker. Uh, and then you have to do the full application. So it's like a priority 1A or B, 2 to a 1C uh, it, it, which is interesting, but then you see what the municipalities do, and it's like, did you even read it? Did you even read yeah. what the state was doing? Uh, and then, West Orange, New Jersey. The application came out on Wednesday. It was due next Friday. Nine days. Damn. <laughs> Nine days, but they wanted not only what you're going to give to the conditional to the state of New Jersey, they wanted more. They wanted like halfway between that and the full application. So you had to go get all your security plans and your designs and your schematics. Uh, and it was ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. I was talking to a dude that was uh, that's trying to get a license in West West Orange. That's wild. Yeah, he, he probably missed it because, like, yeah. again, the other thing was with the uh, zoning. And so it's like you look on the map, and you're like, well, this is it. And then so that they actually said, yeah. well, out of this, a lot of them were concentrated here. It's like, that's because that's the only place you gave people. Yeah. Duh. I, know they, I, I already saw a couple of places being like, all right, we got to get rid of the thousand feet from a church thing because I think it was Princeton. They're like, that, that eliminates the entire city. Like there's never <laughs> be, there's like, there's no and then like yeah. that's hilarious that it's God. What the fuck does God <laughs> care about you using a plant that he created? Shouldn't you be like, it's not like this, you're doing heroin, you know, Christ. Yeah. Didn't like so this it. stuff, like, this is what uh, I talk about this in my comics. And I try to do this when I, in my, in my work is talk about how, like, we as cannabis users, I think, need to stop apologizing for using cannabis. Like, I think I see it all the time. It's like listen, I'm not dealing like, blah, 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 I'm like, or, or, or something. It's always like, well, you know, just tax the shit out of it, you know, or, 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 you know, we will, we'll have security to make, we'll just get all this. Security. Like you're the, you should be like, listen, dude, we don't fucking need security on this. We don't need a million cameras. Think about what you're saying. Like people have to, 
see it for what it really is. Mm-hmm. Well, again, it's been villainized, you know. So yeah. all these all these nimbies, once they realize the towns, because you know here in Washington and all the other states, what they've done too when they do zoning, they put all the weed shops in like bad industrial neighborhoods mm-hmm. and. Those areas actually end up getting better because yeah. cannabis consumers are freaking. You know, it's not like we're all like, I can't wait to get that. You yeah, know, yeah. yeah. No, you no, well, the, the other reasons why they get better is because think about the capital improvements that go into a piece of real estate with the regulation that uh, maybe I, I'm I'm quite a nerd like that, and so like you know, don't break the things. <laughs> Anyway, um, and so uh, the the amount of uh, investment that you put into a grow or the investment that you put into a dispensary uh, creates a rezone or a reassessing from the county assessor's office. And you have a new tax basis for that piece of real estate for the community, which they love, by the way. Mm-hmm. And then that increases the property values in the surrounding area. And so yeah. sometimes people will go like, what's this going to do to my property values? And then you have to explain this to them. It's like, well, do you know how your property values are currently valued? The opposite's true then, like with redlining and the other bullshit that we used to do. And then this was like legal practices prior mm-hmm. to the Fair Housing Act in the 60s, the fucking 60s. And so like, you know, they would you know, just pretty much crater neighborhoods by yeah. by saying somebody's going to come in and creating forced selling. Just like if I go over to Wall Street and go like, oh, Vladimir Putin just invaded your ass. And, and like tried to create a crashing market by, you know, making up uh, a fabricated crisis uh, that was allowed to happen. And so now it's the exact opposite. You know, a, a business comes in, it improves the real estate. The real estate is then reassessed. And then suddenly there's more taxes that come in. That price has gone up, which helps to benefit the other ones. But they just gloss over it and they're like, eh, I don't like what it smells like. And I go, yeah, yeah. Smell, how could you not like how it smells? It smells so good. You know? yeah. There are so many worse smells that we tolerate. So many. All the farms. Time. Hog farms. Like Hog literally, farms. literally like the shit cow farms. You know, you're driving out, to, you know, you pass, you're like, oh, there must be cows out here. You literally know when you're passing a cow farm. But like, you know, those NIMBYs will change because when they see that revenue coming they in, they're going to be like, oh, so no one dies. Things get better. Colorado is a prime example of that. So, but you're in Washington. I mean, has it changed? Has there, has it, you know, are there more cities that have dispensaries there now than there were? Or? There have been, but you know, it's been kind of loosey goosey here for a while because we had the medical that was so predominant. And, you know, we had lounges, man. We had places where I can go and pay for a dab and, there were, there were, we had markets where I'd walk in and there'd be pounds of weed and you can get like a gram out of somebody's, you know, I'd, I'd sample grams of various strains just because then I come back because I really like that one strain. I'd be like, oh shit, they sold out of the pounds because, yeah. but there was mar- there was a whole world going on before legalization here that has to, like it I got think restricted. you got to move the weight. You got to move the weight quicker. Like, you know, that's one of the things that I hate about like the, the MSO style where it's just like commoditized weed. It's not a McDonald's hamburger that yeah, fundamentally it misunderstands the product yeah. that you're selling. It's not a consumer packaged good. It's yeah. like fresh produce. Like, yeah, you know, nobody just, ever like, around, a, man. can you imagine if you approach strawberries as a consumer packaged good? What the fuck is wrong with you? But then <laughs> that is common in the, yeah. the very well capitalized publicly traded industry, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true, man. I, my, my, my mom, uh, well, I don't want to give this away. Somebody I know. Somebody uh, know. <laughs> uh, I smoke, uh, t- uh, uses vape pens, right? And so, but very rarely, like, you know, um, very, like, sparingly. And so I'll go over there and be like, mom, or person I know, this is like all C- um, CBN now. Like, it's been totally turned. Like, there's hardly any THC left in this thing. But you can see it. There's tons of oil, but it's just like old. It's just like not as good as it, it once was. Damn. Right. And she'll be like, "This is yeah." It just kind of like makes me more tired. I'm like, "Yeah," because the THC that was in there is most is turned mostly into CBN now, Damn. or at least much more. And so, like these products sit around, man, and and you know they don't have to they they, they don't have to take them off the shelves for like a year. Like you can buy a a a. a, a concentrate that's finally on sale they'll be like oh you know <laughs> I, moxie concentrates that are 100 bucks a gram normally 
are finally on sale for like seventy. The concentrate yeah. prices in Washington State are freaking the floor. Like, I oh, can't yeah. believe how cheap vape carts are. Miggy, what's a vape cart price in Washington State usually? They range from 20 to 40, depending on what you're getting, you know. And how, then also, how big? Uh, how for big grams. For grams. Yeah. yeah. But it also, don't grams. Grams. we yeah, have yeah, the they don't sell it. Yeah. What's the, uh, Brian, because like here in Illinois, 500 milligrams or less. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah, or less. Yeah, we have 500 milligrams, yeah. In, yeah, uh, with, 500 with, milligrams or less. There's a, I think there might have, there, there may have been companies that have put out one gram pens, but it's the standard is 0.5. It's like all 0.5. And then they have disposables that are 0.25 or 0.3, yep. some of them. Yep. And, um, you know, I don't know, I'm not really a vape pen like person because like all we, I don't really trust black market vapes. And then all we have is the MSO vapes. So it's like, I don't really... If I, I sometimes actually I actually got a vape pen recently from California that was cool. It was like this, it was like a fat, like it wasn't like the, the 501, it was like a pod, I guess. Thing, oh, like it was magnet? Great. yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. I liked it, and I was like, you could tell it was just this lit, which is kind of like all I want. I like, don't want it to, you know, here there's a big thing where it's like it's like cannabis oil plus. Added in extra turps and mm. flavors. It tastes like grape or whatever it is. But it's just like with this lit vape, it was good. But I'm not really a vape person in general because it's like I don't really have access to good vapes ever. I feel bad for you guys in your states that didn't have like a medical market with a community because you guys. You know, again, the the markets when the MSOs with the limited licenses, the consumer only loses out when they don't have competition. You know, there's no, you know, the the fact that you can buy a 300 pound in Oregon versus the the 3,000 pound in in Indiana or Idaho, or whatever, you know, is insane because it's all yeah. dirt and seeds and uh, the potentials there. But because limited markets and lack of competition and restricted, you know, home grows. Uh, it's it's effed up. This this it's unfair how how this industry has been shaping. And it's like this is what makes me nuts. Is like I'm like just let the people. Like, it could seem so antithetical to so all these people that are like all about competition. You know the invisible hand of the free market. All of these things. The same people that say these things all the time also are all about a totally limited, uncompetitive cannabis market That's it's the greed it's the greed trap and so greed's like you know finger uh, finger cuffs uh, chinese finger traps and stuff so they they want a sure thing because they want to have a really good uh, financial model that's perfect and so that they can have a return for their investors whom they have a lot of uh, and so you need to be able to continue to provide these types of quarterly results or pro formas or like prospecticus about like where the company's going and all of that depends on the fake prop up. It all depends on the fake prop up. Otherwise, all those numbers, they're just yeah. numbers. Yeah. I mean, that's the that that's why it makes me so nuts because it's fake, man. It's all fake. I mean, yeah. like, look at look at look at what we're dealing with here. This is not something that's difficult to 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 cultivate or or, or is hard to get. It's plentiful. It's easy to, well, I suck at growing it, but humans are generally <laughs> pretty good at it. Uh, uh, and it's something that's going to be all over here. Look at Canada, dude. The prices are going to come down. It'll level off eventually, but the prices are going to come down for this product. And, and, and the fit, you know, artificial. Yeah, exactly. They're just like artificially creating this, this fake, you know, scarcity. And it's plain right. as day. But they, they, they do it with the oil markets. They do it with the avocado markets. They do it with mm. like potassium markets and stuff. And so mm. it's it's despicable, but at the same time, you want to make that jack. Yeah. You want to make that money. And so like that, there's that problem. But you know, I don't I don't really like it. I don't go for it. But um, it's I can see the motivation and why it's there. Yeah. Well, that's why we're pushing back on it because 
consumers can't take it anymore, man. It's it's not it's 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 just like the the hype. I mean, you think about it from a patient perspective, right? Okay. In Pennsylvania, this is an all patient market. Every single person in, in the legal market is a patient. And those are the people who are being exploited. And you go, I go to, I, I've been to the dispensaries before. Like I try not to go now, but I have been there before. And, you know, you see people, you know, it's for people that, have, you know, <clears throat> this is a medical market. People think of it as like a ruse, but there is a population of people that use this for medicine and to, right. to help them get and that through. population could actually be much larger if a widespread and pervasive decades old propaganda campaign was not officially tolerated and that channels like ours and your uh, work as well and, and other activists work were not marginalized and then not only marginalized but there's algorithms actively oppressing them to work against and prevent you from changing these laws. So that's one of the reasons, like when we got into this, you know, 10 years ago or so, when I met Miggy and then we started this podcast about three years ago, I was always, because I was stupid. Uh, I thought that I didn't know the extent of the suppression that was out there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I figured we'd have two, five years. And now that I'm here and I'm like, yeah, but now money's on the line. I'm sorry. People don't understand anything when money's on the line. They just understand that's my money, right? I'm getting that. This is mine. Okay, cool. End of thought process. Yeah, yeah. it's true. And, and it dictates, and, and I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, I think uh, once you legalize, you lose a certain amount of um, energy in the activist community, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's harder to get people to get people worked up to make changes from something that already happened. So that's and why it works so long on. And know. I think that like uh, Illinois is a prime example of something now. Like they they have to it needs to be fixed already. Uh, but you know, there's less motivation to get people to do it because you don't have all the people behind it being like, oh. That's yeah. really messed up. And to see the lack of motivation, if you really want to see it, you can dig into the numbers and how Kabuki Theater and difficult it was to get a cannabis license in the state of Illinois. They've given out 50 infuser licenses. They only got like 110 or 130 applications for it. So like you basically had a 50% chance of getting this infuser license. So they didn't know that. They thought it was going to be this extremely impossible, difficult th thing to get. Now that they've all gotten them, they're worthless. You know, a lot of so that. Was this just to make edible? So, uh, in the, yeah. in but you can't even do extraction, so you have to buy the oil from somebody just to make the edible. But nobody oh, will wow. sell you the oil. Yeah, the the the, the MSFs don't want to sell the oil. But then yeah. again, like a lot of them, they have to because of the COVID pandemic and everything. Everybody's financials got thrown up in the air. They all lost their real estate because two years went by. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and so they're they're getting their their legs underneath them, and hopefully in another year it'll be okay. But uh, People just don't care. Like the people that are in the industry, like kind of like oncologists. Like if I was an oncologist, I just think everybody has cancer because everybody I would see has cancer. <laughs> but that's just not true. And so like because you're in the industry, you just think everybody loves weed because you really love weed and it's your life. And it's just not true. And so like I don't tell people what I do in my neighborhood. You know, they have no idea. They're just like, how did a hippie get in here? <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Try you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of it's not just the companies that are uh, complacent, but the consumers. That's what you're seeing. A lot of people yeah. not trying to push back and fight and say, you know what? GTI is bad. We should really go to the other yeah. guy. Like, but yeah. again, that's your limited goddamn market when you only yeah. have three players. That's what oh, yeah. And, I mean, it becomes a, a lot of these people, a lot of people in the, in the market get um, kind of like Stockholm syndrome, too. I think where they're like, no, man, like. GTI, I need this one. This is my favorite. I love them. I don't care. Like, they're just like, because they, it's like, I swear, it's Stockholm Syndrome. They're like, they love their abuser. Well, yeah, fanboys or whatever. It's kind of like yeah. what the last four years with the last guy, kind of like a weird cult kind of thing yeah. where I'm always going to stand by this and say the same shit over, even though it doesn't mean anything or <laughs> is true. You know, and that's yeah. part of the problem. Yeah, well, and I know. think that, like, it's, you know, 
all we have, all we want, like all I think consumers really want is access to, like we said before, choice. We want not to be ripped off. We want like mm-hmm. competitive pricing and, and high access. quality. Yeah, and high yeah, quality. Like, that's the thing. This isn't this isn't a consumer package good. I don't want this thing to sit on the shelf for six eight months. It's ready now. Move this shit because we're gonna have something else that's ready now in six weeks. And, yeah. and you know you don't want to. I mean, that's it's not Cabernet. You know that if yeah. you if you want to make it a Cabernet, go get the Frenchy cannoli method and press yeah, it into yeah, some hatch. Exactly. Then put it yeah. in the you know on, on the shelf. But when yeah. it's when it's a perishable fresh flower, you know, and and well, it's cured of course, but it's ready then. Yeah, smoke that that's shit. What you want. That's what you yeah. want. That was when I actually the first actually the first time I ever bought legal weed was in Washington. And I remember buying it and being like, and smoking it when I got to my Airbnb and being like, this is so fresh. Like this yeah, weed this is, is so much more yeah. Yeah. fresh than I'm used to. It's like, it, it, it's so fragrant. It was almost like a different experience because, you know, we had, good, we had, you know, good weed on the East Coast, but often you're right. It would be like sitting around, you know, like not necessarily moving or, or it's all, you know, it's something that sat around in California for a while and then they moved it or something like that. Yeah, they brokered weight. They're like, yeah, we grew too much ice cream cake. Oh shit. You too. All yeah, right. Yeah. How yeah. You? yeah. 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 But yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. Cause like in your state though, in your medical state, you only re- had McDonald's available. And then you went to another state and was like, Ooh, this is what yeah. it's, what it's yeah. like. When it's what do you call it? Hamburger. I thought Trust that me. was a hamburger. Nope. <laughs> Trust me, man. I, I look at. I, I remember. I, I used to spend like every evening looking at weed maps, and just being like, "Damn, if I was here, if I just lived like right in this spot in L.A., man, I could get the best fucking weed mm. right now." <laughs> I'd be like, "Damn!" I used to when I was going my book tours. I'd be like, "Can you schedule me a lot of dates on the West Coast?" Uh, blah blah blah. And then I'd be like looking for like weeks leading up to the to the. You have to, to do the, it the reverse. Oh, yeah. You have to like create a, a YouTube channel or something. It'd be like, we're gonna be here. Don't forget to bring the dank nuggets. I'll see you there, guys. Can't wait to sign your books. Bring them dank nuggets. You know. <laughs> I'd be like, I would be like, oh man. All right, I'm gonna be in uh, Fort Collins. Oh, 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 I'm staying right next to a dispensary. Like it was yeah. like amazing. Nice. I, you know. But uh, you know, and then then. When it came here, I was like looking forward to that same experience, and it was like how this was what, before I didn't know what MSOs were because I I've never uh, I can explain and I can provide the audience with uh, a description of the experience uh, of purchasing weed in Illinois uh, relative to doing it in Michigan, Colorado, or Washington State. I have not bought weed in California. What? No, no, I have or California, and so um, I've never bought weed in Pennsylvania. How is that? Uh, you ever bought weed in Pennsylvania? Nope, I haven't. I'm, I'm relying on your story about how to buy weed in Pennsylvania. Yeah, what's, because what's the user experience. The user experience. So, so, I mean, legal weed. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's horrible, man. I mean, it's, it's probably not that different from Illinois. You, you, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd be feel right at home, I guess, if you were used to an Illinois dispensary because it's the same players and stuff. You walk in, you know, you get you get your car, you know, carded, and you sit in your little waiting room for a little while. And then it's kind of like a bank on the inside and uh Damn. and and uh they you know you can't see any weed there's like kind of like packaging it's like very uh like a it's like you 2001 a, it's like 2001 a space odyssey in there it's like you know no well, no, no ipad uh, no, no, like, they've yeah, even like yeah. kind of gotten away yeah. from like bud tenders you know it's like point on here what you want oh no no i mean uh no no they have a they have bud tenders and and, mm. and there's a the stuff's all up on the walls and stuff. But you, I usually go in, if I ever go, I, I I have my thing picked out and I'm like ordered it and they have it ready for me. But even still, they gotta like, you know, if you if you're like, oh, I want to get this too, they gotta like go. You're like, okay, go in the back to some other room area, grab like your one thing that you're buying, bring it back to you, and then you know you gotta be like, uh, is today do I have points? You know, there's all that keeping your points because then you discounts. get discounts. And, Customer loyalty programs. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to really, they're not building brand loyalty any other way. Here. I mean, like, uh, there's one company called Air Wellness. 
A Y R. Uh, yep. They have a very unique strategy where they get a dispensary license just outside of the city, so the real estate is cheaper, and oh. um, <clears throat> draw people from the city out to the suburbs by having like ridiculous sales all the time, like constant thirty percent off stuff. Which, you know, I bought weed at like fifty percent off here, and you know, you get home and you're like. You know what? It's not really good at any price. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, man. That you know, great, like, huh? You're sitting there, you know, it's overpriced, overpriced, overpriced. But then you finally see it for like a big discount. And you're like, oh, I'm going to go get that one that's supposed to be really good. The best weed they have this dispensary and it's 50% off. I'm going to go for it. And you get it and you go home and you're like, this is the best shit in the whole state. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And I can't even afford it at all unless it's fifty percent off. Like, mm. so what do you do? Turn it butter? Not good. Like, they uh, will never give you a fat eighth. You're not gonna get a uh, four grammar. No, it's gonna be three point uh, two or something. Yeah, Actually, yeah, I'm yeah. round it down. Their eighths are three point five grams. They don't care yeah. about anything past that five, um, yeah. and maybe not even that. But yeah, I, it's it's the same type of experience. Can you even look at the product when you're buying it in Pennsylvania? Mm. No, just, you you get like, the, when I get to my car, I'm always like rip it up and smell it. <laughs> right, right. You can't, you can't touch the product. You can't look yeah, at the yeah. product. Like when I go buy liquor, I can get the bottle of beer I want. They trust me enough to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you then look give at it, it to the person. Like... I can check myself out at the grocery store yeah. with my my uh, case of vodka that I bought. You know, because yeah. I've had a week. Not sure if I'll be here come Monday, and mm -hmm. I, it's legal for me to do this. And like. Go grab the vodka, check out, and then get some Tylenol. You know, like I can do all of these things, and some Ajax. Why not? You know, get some yeah, get yeah. some toilet cleaners while I'm at yeah. it, just to really seal the deal. <laughs> so no one bats an eye. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it, that's wild, man. Like the re that's, what, that's another thing. That's what I'm talking about with the, the regulations and restrictions. Like, what are we dealing with here? It's not a nuclear yeah. bomb. <laughs> like this. Right. Is <laughs> How is this being safer? Like, you know, yeah. you're, you're starting with something that the only way that can hurt you is if a ton of it falls on your head. And so, yeah. or like you do something where you just, the, if you don't have a tolerance and somebody spikes your shit and like, you know, edibles or something, and you wig out and you're driving at the time or something. Yeah. Sure, yeah. that could be a problem. But that's a problem for numerous other things that we regulate. Yeah. Like, for example, yeah. the vodka example that we were talking about. NyQuil. You give me like NyQuil, NyQuil. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna take the Nyquil now. By the time I get home, I'll be. You know, I'll be. By the time it kicks in, I'll be at home. And then you get into traffic and you're driving home on Nyquil. You can Dude. easily do that. It can happen in, at all the time. People take stop drowsy stuff. They don't even know. They take it and they're like, "Oh, it's drowsy shit. I'm driving to work. Oh well." Mm -hmm. You know, Benadryl. Like, that, Benadryl. Yeah, man. Benadryl. There's that shit gets me fucked. Man, allergy season yeah. coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, well, start like early, that. get rid of those <laughs> anti-inflammation things, you know. Uh, I don't know what else you can do for the allergy season. I've been sneezing my, my butt off, too, here in Illinois, but oh, well, at least I have yeah. weed. Yeah. Like, you know, and then that's the nice thing. We can grow it as, as medical patients in Illinois. So you, the ability to be able to cultivate your own supply allows you to do a couple of things that are nice. First, you can find what works for you and ensure that you have adequate supply and then also you can see what went into it. So you can have uh, real clarity as to the safety of the product that you're about to use. Yeah. You know everything that went into the plant. Right. If you make edibles, you know everything that went into the ingredients of that edible. Um, right. Total control. It's the last line of defense against all these corporations of home grow. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're going, and they're going after it too. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, that this whole MSO thing is actually going to turn everyone into a home grower, whereas if it was a very, if it all was competitive, like mm -hmm. you would, I mean, maybe you would want to, but there's the need wouldn't be there. The way it is now, if you can home grow and you're in an MSO state, you have to learn how to home grow because it's the only way to like, you know, save yourself thousands and thousands of dollars beyond all of that finding yourself the best medicine i mean real patients take a lot i know guys that yeah. dab grams just to treat I their mean, conditions exactly i think about that too all the time is that 
you know, uh, the people that don't care about a $60 ace are people that don't need to smoke that much. You know, that are like, you know, $60 ace lasts them a while. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? An ace lasts them a lot of people. I know like a day, like that's one day. Oh yeah. Um, I watched an interview the other day about a heroin addict and he was talking about how much money he put, spends on heroin and it was 60 bucks a day. And I'm like, that is a full-time job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, look, I mean, like, that's crazy because like, this is not heroin and this mm. is something that you can, you have to grow your supply in your home. You can, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 there's so many so many things just like it that we purchase all the time oh, at yeah. the grocery store and all over the place. Yep. And, and, and I really don't think, you know, homegrown tomatoes aren't putting big tomato out of business. You know who makes <laughs> most of the tomatoes? Now you go, you see the tomato sauce on any pizza that you probably buy at a restaurant or the ketchup. Morningstar. Morningstar buys all the tomatoes. Well, they make all the tomatoes. Huh. They, they're one of the largest producers of vegetables in the United States. They have only one employee title. They have many employees, but there's no, it's a completely decentralized management structure. Uh, depending on what your job is, everybody has the same title. You just have different responsibilities. Uh, and then you know, it's, it's weird. But uh, this is an interesting little figment or uh, factoid uh, because like, think about it. Why are they so worried about uh, Morningstar's not worried about the people growing tomatoes. If anything, that's good for their sales. It means yeah. they're going to be reaching for that ketchup and that, that, that tomato sauce. It means they like tomatoes. They like tomatoes. And <laughs> yeah. so uh, it's only 31.9 million Americans have been participating in vegetable gardening in 2019. Damn. And so that is essentially one-tenth of the population. 90% of Americans aren't going to fucking grow their own weed. Itty -bitty they bitty. aren't. No. Yeah. And then once you grow your own weed, you find out what a pain in the ass it is and that yeah. you actually have to do it and that it takes months, by the way, months to do. And you can screw it up, especially your first few runs. So yeah. the vast, vast There's majority. There's so much opportunity to screw it up. <laughs> so many. Tons of opportunity to screw it up. Yeah. And so uh, most people are going to buy their stuff. They're going to be, it's just like the, the Nordic track or the, uh, the, the, you know, exercise bike or the gym membership, or, you know, this is going to be the year it's legal now and you get all the stuff. <laughs> and by the end of it, you're hanging your closet. You know, it's like, look, it's kind of like a new closet space. You can just put some clothes in there. You're not growing anything anymore. It's just a tent yeah, collecting yeah, yeah. Dust in your basement, you know? Yep. Yep. For, yeah, for a lot of people, yep. I'm, I'm sure like, you know, some of that 10% uh, of the, the population will probably continue to grow and love it. But that means yeah. it's probably only like one tenth of that percent. Now we're talking about 1% of the population is going to grow all and, your weed. And those people that are really good at it and are get really into home grow and are, are awesome at it end up getting into the industry. as Opportunities. The industry. Yeah. And they're, they're good at it because they've practiced, you know, they've taught right. themselves all about the plant on their own I'm from personal interest you know like we're well, agronomists we got a lot of farmers here and so i can it's 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 an agronomy product and, and if you know how to farm and you know what npk is uh great now you just kind of take it a little bit further by getting into um curing methodologies but it's mm -hmm. not like curing tobacco but a lot of americans figured out how to cure tobacco in certain areas of this uh, country yeah and, yeah and i mean it's just Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's, it's just wild because uh, I just feel so bad for the. I mean, my family was all living in New Jersey and they all got legalized weed and they all. My dad has, you know, this. He has all these vegetables and stuff, and I'm like, dude, he could grow so. And I'd, I'd put him to work, man. I mean, I'd be like, <laughs> dude, they're already out there. Uh, but it, it, and it, we still are are waiting for that. There's like three home grow bills going through. The legislature now but I, like i said like how how I, you know i don't know how fast those are going to move now that they've already legalized no, you have to understand then it becomes one of those deals where uh there's a lot of pulling up the ladder behind you in the limited market state industry so new jersey had a long piece of litigation that got resolved prior to them accepting new applications this year and then they just awarded another 68 licenses. And so yeah. now I think something's going to oh. go work. 
that's where I think it's going to go wrong is like those 68s have been released, but they don't match what the city said they wanted. And yeah. So we're going to um, have beef. Yeah. So the, uh, I was looking at the licenses in Jersey, right? And I, I'm trying to look them all up and see if, you know, I recognize anybody. For the most part, it seems to be new LLCs created in the last six months um, in Jersey. Um, uh, I'm not seeing a lot of, it's just from the names, I'm not seeing any a lot of places that are. It was very difficult. In, you had to. In, like the, 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 huh, the disclosure for the entity forms were painful. And so if you were a startup LLC, it would have been way easier to fill out this form than if you were an established business. It would have really sucked to try to fill out one of those forms as an established business, especially as an MSO trying to, you know, get a new license. So there is one uh, company that came that is on the list here that is the same name as a as a MSO brand. It's Agarkind, which is owned by Verano, which uh, which uh, it operates in Jersey. So I don't know what happened there. I think there's that's uh, I think they had to. No, like didn't the I MSO? Think I think that they they couldn't. They could only do so much. Like you can't force. You can't like be like no. You you're not to. allowed to. If they, right. They, and so I thought right. that was a that, that's a different level of the the application, but they count toward the thirty seven. And so, like the thirty-seven would include the medical providers that like did their method, their their path that gave them uh, their ability to also grow adult use cannabis, because they don't have that right yet as a as a medical holder to grow the adult use plant. And now they'll have that right, uh, so they can start flooding their dispensaries and getting ready to you know take market share or leave. Yeah, I mean, and we're going to see because I think that. There may be consolidation too here with these 68 licenses. I mean, definitely, well, I mean, but it's going to be a lot of fun, man. And so, yeah. I, I, you know. I mean, we'll see what's going to happen over the next year in Jersey. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, really, all these states, right? It's all about watching yeah. the evolution of uh, I mean, legalization. I, I, for me personally, I, I would, I, I'm just rooting for Jersey to have a good market so I could just run over the bridge and grab some grab stuff for myself. Oh yeah! Remember, yeah. Maine is four hours away. Yeah, uh, and then, farther from Philly, though. <laughs> but if, uh, from well, Jersey, I, if I was if I was in Philly, I would find the closest Indian area in New York and go there for weed because they'll yeah, probably have uh, the best they, they already, the best quality. They already are allowed to, to to do whatever they want, basically at this point, because they're not under the jurisdiction and, and they can go. They said they can go, so there's yeah. already stuff opened up there. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, Brian, how do people get in touch with you? How do people find you and follow you on the, the interwebs? Uh, yeah, I'm at uh, Box Brown on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, that's where I do most of my act. I'm mostly active there. Uh, I also have a Patreon um, for le my comic Legalization Nation. Uh, you can look that up. It updates once a week. Uh, and I have a various number of ways you can get it. Substack, uh, Patreon, and all that stuff. You Instagram and has, everything has the comments, so you'll see it if you follow me. Right on, dude. Cool. Thanks for having me on, guys. That was a fun talk. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming on. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, all the good people that have become a member of the channel. You know, really appreciate you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Allow us to give some money over to uh, the people that are sitting in prison unjustly when we actually post a profit for that month. And uh, we're about to close up March. I think we'll be able to make a donation this month. So, uh, and then everybody who is a member does get shout outs. Uh, we'll ask, we'll answer your questions. And then of course you make it into the credits. And so we're going to roll and I'll, I'll see you guys later. All right. Take it easy guys. Thanks Brian. Thanks. Such a snob with that stupid little hair. Like, I'll put the overlay on and then I'll be like, oh my God, you moved. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good, dude. Hey, yeah. and thanks again for that 1999. Yeah. Jeez.